sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Stephen Fry. Thank you. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us for a second week in London's West End at Her Majesty's Theatre. It was in 1705 that the playwright and architect John Vanbrugh decided to build a theatre on this site and sought funding from fellow members of the famous Kit Kat Club. But they were having a break, so he had to wait. <laughs> Vanbrugh then approached the Royal Westminster Bank with his business plan. Not only were theatres notorious loss-making enterprises, but also Vanbrugh was frequently bankrupt and as a hopeless, habitual gambler was a regular inmate of the debtor's prison. So the bank made him chairman. <laughs> a stone's throw distant is Covent Garden, where in the 1850s William Gladstone spent his evening saving the fallen women of the area's many brothels. Eventually exhausted by his selfless devotion to the cause, his physician suggested he urgently devote his energies to saving the local clap clinic. <laughs> Famous institutions here in Westminster include the old Royal London Hospital, which was recently the subject of restoration work. However, disaster struck when the homeopathic wing collapsed because they used scaffold poles, which were just one millionth the strength of proper scaffolding that actually worked. Um, Let's meet the teams. <laughs> On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my right, Timbrook Taylor and Victoria Wood. <laughs> and I'm very excited, though perhaps not as excited as some, to welcome to her place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of frantic scoring. Please welcome the ever delightful Samantha. <laughs> We launch ourselves into this new series, team, don't we, in troubled times, such as the poor state of our economy, swinging cutbacks and redundancies, are even hitting employment levels in broadcasting. Jobs deemed no longer necessary include the You and Yours Award speechwriter, <laughs> Dale Winton's Ron Seal artist, <laughs> and um, Chris Tarrant's entire team of sincerity wranglers. <laughs> with, with programmes thus paired to the bone, I'm going to ask the teams to suggest cut price versions of popular films or shows for TV or radio which might be made under such constraints. Barry, you can start. The <laughs> Devil Wore Primark. <laughs> Tim. No deal. <laughs> Victoria. The Rain Hoods of Sherberg. Graham. Harry Potter and the Paul Daniels magic set. <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> the curious case of Jensen Button. <laughs> Slum dog milliner. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Chip. <laughs> Who's afraid of Victoria Wood? <laughs> Actually, that'd be quite expensive, sir. <laughs> the casebook of Eamon Holmes. <laughs> CSI Macclesfield. <laughs> and Judy. <laughs> Question, Tim. <laughs> Crossroads. Yeah. <laughs> now, the teams are going to sing for us in a round called, yes, a round called One Song to the Tune of Another. Oh. Now this, yeah. This simple and well-known concept will require explanation only to someone who's been out of touch and living in a cave for the last 35 years. So, teams, this is how it works. <laughs> All right? A song is made up of two basic elements, the tune 
yes? And the words. No, I'll put this more simply. These two elements are like a lock and its key, all right? The lock represents the tune, providing security for the words to be inserted, just like the key to open up a world of musical wonderment. <laughs> but not all locks have keys, do they? Certain types of locks, right? such as those used to secure bank safe or bicycles or other low-value items, employ a secret series of numbers which create a mechanical code to thwart any would-be thief. But for this to be effective, you must have the most baffling combination it's possible to devise. At the piano, Colin Sell! <laughs> so, Barry, let's start with you, shall we? I'd like you to sing, please, the words of Doncha by the Pussycat Dolls <laughs> to the tune of Wandering Star. I know you like me. I know you do. That's why whenever I come around She's all over you And I know you want it It's easy to see And in the back of your mind I know you Should be on with me <laughs> Don't you wish your girlfriend Was hard art like me <laughs> Don't you wish your girlfriend Was a freak like me don't you wish your girlfriend was wrong like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was fun like me? I know she loves you. I understand. I'd probably be just as crazy about you. Magnificent. And I'm going to give you extra points there for keeping your teeth in. Well done. <laughs> now, Tim, I'd like you to sing the words of Fit But You Know It by the streets to the tune of Some Enchanted Evening. <laughs> About an eight or a nine Maybe even nine And a half in four beers time That blue top shop top You've got on is nice But too much fake tan though And yeah, you score high But there's just one little thing That's really, really, really Annoying me about you You see, yeah, like I said You are really fit But my gosh, don't you Just know it, I'm not trying To pull you Breathtaking, Victoria <laughs> I'd like you to sing the words of Life by Desiree to the tune of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. I'm afraid of the dark, especially when I'm in the park, when there's no one else around. Oh, I get the shivers. I don't want to see a ghost. It's the sight that I fear most. I'd rather have a piece of toast. Watch the evening news Live, live, oh live Oh live, oh live Live, live, oh live Oh live Brilliant. I don't think even Tim could hit that note. And finally, Graham, I'd like you to sing the words of Evil Has No Boundaries by Slayer. 
to the tune of Wonderful Copenhagen. <laughs> Blasting our way through the boundaries of hell No one can stop us tonight We take on the world with hatred inside Mayhem the reason we fight Satan our master in evil mayhem Guides us with every first step Our exes are growing with power and fury Soon there'll be nothingness left Surviving the slaughters and killing we've lost <laughs> mm. Thank you, Graham, you have pleased the Dark Lord <laughs> Well, the next game is called Word for Word And it's a word game all about words <laughs> So one team should start by taking turns to exchange a random series of words which must be totally unconnected. For example, if the words fat and duck were followed by diocarm and imodium, <laughs> that wouldn't do. Tim and Victoria, you can start exchanging your words while Barry and Graham, you should carefully monitor their words and challenge to take over play if you detect a connection. So off you go, Tim and Victoria. Marzipan. Skirting board. Oh, there's a challenge there from Graham. But most people don't know, marzipan is made from what you can <laughs> scrape out from behind the skirting board. <laughs> that is true. Tim can it vouch for true. that. Yeah. Definite connection, They've admitted it, so we it's a adjudication. Yes, yes, I'm giving it to you too right, now. Okay. Very early challenge, very well done. Uh, right, allergic. Carpet. Oh, what? No, that was Graham. I'm allergic himself. to carpet. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're allergic to carpet? Yeah. Especially if it's got marzipan on it. Yeah. Right. I can't go near tufted shag or nothing. <laughs> yes. Well, that rules that out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was never ruled in, Tim, was it, really? Let's see if we can get a run going. No, come yeah. on. No connection. Okay. Come on. Beige. Um, exit. <laughs> She's looking around looking the theatre. Looking around. Theater. Well, just be glad there is one. <laughs> Guitar. Table. Flute. Tango. Moran. Oh, oh. Lays. Flute and tango. Uh, well, that's boring, isn't it? It's <clears throat> fruit drinks. Tango. No, flute. Will you pay attention? <laughs> fruit. Flute. The flute. In flute. the Chinese market. <laughs> <laughs> They're flute drinks. All right, come on. Graham and Barry, off you go. All right. Um, diaphragm. <laughs> well, that's that's got to be a first, Tim. Hesitation. <laughs> oh! Ah, <laughs> uh, bliss, but no. <laughs> right. Marmalade. Garrulous. Jam. Hyperbolic. <laughs> Yogurt. <laughs> oh, dangerous. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, Victoria's That's, a, that's a sort of yoghurt, isn't it? What? Hyperbolic. <laughs> it is, it's isn't it? your intestines, With a live isn't culture. It? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. absolutely was... right. Hyperbolic mm. yoghurt. Yes, mm. I was praying Gray would say that's that. That's right. <laughs> By Danone. So, um... <laughs> From the Bright <laughs> Well, that was a wonderful round. I enjoyed that enormously. <laughs> Hurrah. <laughs> now, of all the board games one commonly hears played on the radio, um... There's none, none that compares with our very own compendium of fun, Bordeaux. And, uh, without further ado, who's going to be blue? Oh, that's me. Um, right. I'll be yellow. I'm green. Barry, are you red? Yes. So you should be. Now zip it up and let's get on with the game. Um, <laughs> have, you, have you all selected your tokens? Yep, I've got a little top hat. I wanted a top hat. Oh, I'll take the little racing car. Yeah. Oh, I like suppose that. I ought to have, being a girl, ought to have either the iron or the thimble. So um, I'll choose the Kalashnikov. <laughs> and Tim? I'm a little teapot. Of course you are. <laughs> so, uh, let Bordeaux commence. Uh, I'm sitting to write the dealer, so I'll start. Four. Fleet Street, Leicester Square, Piccadilly... Oh, waterworks. Well, hurry back. Victoria, you better start. <laughs> OK. Lucky. Oh, three. Wormwood Scrubs. 
Look, your second W is on a triple word score. Oh, that's four points. Uh, now, that means I think you can either have a green wedge for science and nature or <laughs> you can have a house. I'll have a house, please. Oh, a semi. Hmm. <laughs> All right, it's me, isn't it? Yes, Graham. Woo, 17 the hard way. Right. <laughs> Huh? Huh? <laughs> this top hat is heavier than it looks. Huh? Oh. Right, near enough. I'll put um, a little house there. My throw, I believe. Yep. Five. Crooklewood Lane, and this one's free, so I think I shall erect an erotic gherkin. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, yeah. Barry. <laughs> right. Don't wear white trousers. A little spotting there. <laughs> Is it me? Oh, it wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> Silent ones are the worst. <laughs> now, right. Scrabble bag, seven letters. Oh, Q, but... Oh, no, U. Mm. T. Mm, you've got a... E. E, B there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can spell three. <laughs> Pool Street Station. Pool Street? There's no such place as Pool Street Station. There is if you take the liver out of it. <laughs> now, now, Barry, you, you need a steady hand for that. Careful. Oh! oh. <laughs> OK. Clickety-click. One. What do I do now? Black ten on the red jack. Oh, good thinking. Checkmate. <laughs> I don't think so. Queen's Bishop to Old Kent Road. <laughs> you've, you've landed on my gherkin. <laughs> to apologise, I didn't notice. They, they never do. No. <laughs> Tim, Tim, it's your go. OK. And second serve. Come on, Tim. <laughs> What's the score? Fifteen, love. Thanks, darling. Now, here goes. Um, chance. Mrs. Bun, the butcher's son. Um, go direct to jail. Do not pass water. Bad luck, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, how long is this supposed to take? Uh, it says on the box, five to seven years. <laughs> Three. Park Lane. Gotcha, Park, you oh. owe me rent. Got 28 hotels on Park Lane. No, I think you're only supposed to have 27, Tim. Damn, I'd better remove one from the stack. Yep, can... this one. No, no, oh, no, go for, go for the one on the other side. Uh, let me do it my way. <laughs> Easy does it. Oh. Oh. Oops. <laughs> well, never mind, it still fails to work as an outdoor game as well. <laughs> so the teams are now going to indulge us with some good old-fashioned letter writing next. The round is played in support of Post Office Awareness Week as our Royal Mail faces privatisation at the hands of Peter Mandelson. Who else could promise to deliver letters arriving every day at the crack of lunchtime? <laughs> Rumour has it that the parcels handling service might go over to TNT. So much more efficient than having to smash them manually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'd like you to take it in turns to improvise the correspondence between two famous historical figures, Barry and Graham. I'd like you to start by composing a letter from John Brown to Queen Victoria, then Tim and the confusingly named Victoria <laughs> will come up with the reply. However, the challenge is that the letters must be constructed by each panellist alternating one word at a time. I shall signal the end of the correspondence by blowing this, <laughs> like so. Off you go, Barry and Graham. Dear me. <laughs> <laughs> Your 
Yule. Tide. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> Is approaching. Therefore, I wish to ask you if it would be possible for you to attend a function during the week beginning December the 21st <laughs> at my house where we will have plenty of sustenance. Furthermore, I propose to lay on my back and wave my, my legs like this. <laughs> All right, so, Tim and Victoria, if you'd like to compose your reply, please. Dear Brown, or Gordon, <laughs> I, we, <laughs> received a missive from you, which discombobulated <laughs> us slightly, but nevertheless, we will have great expectations of you waving to me <laughs> or not as you wish <laughs> we like trifle <laughs> not I particularly prefer to eat lots of trifle <laughs> in my bed so that you could enjoy it with me in my bed <laughs> wow. it's music time again with swanny kazoo Yay! yes this is where the teams play duets combining the emollient glissando of the swanny whistle with the cheeky rasp of the kazoo <laughs> Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Colin um, has recently been highly praised for his work with the White Stripes. So much so, he's been nominated for Zebra Crossing Painter of the Year. <laughs> OK. Tim and uh, Victoria, you can start. And I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Singing in the Rain to feature Victoria Wood on the kazoo and Mr Timbrook Taylor on the swanny whistle. <laughs> doesn't it? Barry and Graham, I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Yeah Yeah by Georgie Fame to feature Barry Cryer on the kazoo and Graham Garden on the kazoo. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've come very nearly to the end of my tether, to the end of the show. <laughs> so there is just time for a round about dogs. Samantha has to nip off now. She has a part-time job driving for a breeder who sells spaniels to wealthy foreigners. Last week, she delivered a Springer and a King Charles Cavalier, and today, Samantha's hoping to have an American cocker in the back of the van. <laughs> now... <laughs> as you know, teams... Teams, you'll be only too painfully aware that niche marketing is all the rage, so I'd like suggestions, please, of shops and other commercial organisations which might provide goods or services specifically for dogs. Graham, you can start. Barks and Spencer. <laughs> Tim? Uh, a couple of airlines, Ryan Airedale and Fleasy Jet. <laughs> the advertising to be done by Scratchy and Scratchy. <laughs> Victoria? I've got some jewellers, H Spaniel. <laughs> and Sniffinies. <laughs> Barry? Wet nose. <laughs> is... I just got that. <laughs> Carbone warehouse. Pooch the chemist. <laughs> Wagamamas. Yay! Mr. Whippet, ice cream. <laughs> Schnauzer Fraser. Hound Stretcher. Abercrombie and Fetch. <laughs> it's sad, there used to be wool woofs, uh, but they called in the retrievers. Mm. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the muffled mobile of time goes off in the theatre of destiny and the surgeon of fate realises he's sewn his phone inside a patient once again, <laughs> it's time to end the show. So from the teams, from Samantha, myself, and the good people here at Her Majesty's Theatre, it's goodbye. Goodbye! Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Victoria Wood have been given silly things to do by Stephen Fry, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith.